Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and this is Flat Earth Fakery. Now, for the last couple of weeks, the Flat Earth community has been all abuzz on these observations off of Miramar Beach in Santa Barbara, California. We've got the black swan, we've got islands, blah, 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 blah. This video is typical. Flat Earth at 31.63 miles, undeniable proof, and it has 100,666 views. Seriously, guys. Now, the problem that I have with the Flat Earth is they just do horrible observations and then try and draw conclusions that don't fit their own observations. So I thought I would take a few minutes and, as a public service, teach the Flat Earth how to do a proper observation to show that the Earth is flat. So let's cue up the music and get going. Now, before we really get into this too much, I think that we need to teach the Flat Earth a little bit about perspective. If you want to prove that the Earth is as flat as a table, you need to know how objects of different heights work on a flat table. For example, I have four soft drink cans here and they are all the same size, and they're all sitting on a table. And I also have two packs of cigarettes there. And as you notice, one's on its side, and one is upright. Now, if you look at these soda cans, you'll notice that they're all the same height, and the camera is at the level of the top of the cans. And you can clearly see that because they all line up right there, see? And you notice that these packs of cigarettes down here are lower than the tops of the cans. And since they are lower than the tops of the cans, they don't interfere with our ability to line these can tops up. You with me so far? Now, let's see what happens when we put the camera down lower. Now, when we put the camera lens right down on the table, maybe a centimeter off the level of the table, a couple of problems should just jump right out at you. First of all, how do we judge the alignment of these three soda cans? Is one of them a little higher than the others? We don't really know because we're not looking at them online. Second of all, we've got these little packs of cigarettes. Now this one's relatively low and this one's a little bit higher, but notice this pack of cigarettes is actually now higher than that far can. This is simple perspective. You know, it's basically small cow, far away cow. They both look the same size, but they're very different objects, right? So if you have something that is higher than your camera level, between you and what you're trying to look at, you can't really see it very well, can you? So let's take that into the flat earth observation from this video. Okay, so here is the island in question, right here. See it? Now, we are literally right down on the beach. And remember, there are five foot waves reported in the ocean, according to the maker of this video. So. If the waves in the ocean are five feet high, why would you be this low to the water? Well, there are two reasons for that. First, like most flat earthers, the person that made this video is basically dishonest. And let me tell you why. They love to put the camera right down at the water level because they know about refraction and they wanna take maximum advantage of refraction. And when they go make these observations and we point out that we're seeing exactly as much of that island as we should on the globe Earth, they can say, oh, no, no. My camera was only at three feet and there were five foot waves out there and that's a wave blocking the bottom of that island. So why would you put a camera at three feet if there were five foot waves between you and the object that you were photographing? Does that make any sense? No unless you wanted an out when we called you on it. You know, let's see if we can figure out a better way to prove that the Earth is flat using a photograph of this same island. Now, in order to do that, one of the things that we might want to do 
is we might want to get our camera up above the waves. Just like we lined it up with the top of those soda cans and the cigarette packs were below it, they didn't interfere with our ability to line up the soda cans. So is there another spot maybe we could go to? Let's have a look. Well, shoot, will you look at that right there? Here's a nice spot. It's listed as 35 feet above the water. And here is our island. We have a beautiful shot of it. So if you want to do an, a good observation, why don't you go right here, put your camera on a tripod, and zoom into that island on a nice clear day where you have a nice sharp horizon. Is that a novel idea? For example, in these two pictures of your black swan, we have one that has a beautiful sharp horizon and all the oil rigs are clearly defined. We can see exactly where the horizon is on this photograph. But instead of using this, you put your camera right down at the water on a day with really high refraction and put out this blurry monstrosity and claim that it showed the earth was flat. You wonder why we laugh at you. But let's not laugh at you. Let's teach you how to do it right. So put your camera right up here at 35 feet and take a nice picture of that island out there. In focus with a clear horizon and minimum distortion, okay? I don't think that's asking too much. Next, let's get an accurate measurement, huh? You've got 31.63 miles and you also have a heading on your measurement. Now, you started off very nicely at the beach where you took the photograph from, but then you went to the wrong island. We're looking at this island over here. Granted, it's only a mile or two longer, but why not measure it to the correct island? But seriously, if you're going to use the other island in your example, why don't you measure to the right island? Now again, here is the correct measurement. Here's your beach. And this is the island that you're looking at right here. Not that one. That one's a mile closer. But let's go ahead and have a little closer look at this. Now there you go. So you see, here's the island that we're looking at. And there's the island you measured it to. So let's go to the right island. Now there's a couple of cool things about this island. First of all, there's a couple of really neat little markings on it. Now for example, there's a tiny little peak right here. That's 68 feet off the water. Then there's another little peak right here. That's 320 feet off the water. We have another one here, 461 feet. Looks like we've got another one right here that's uh, a little notch that we can identify. 638 feet. And then finally, of course, the peak is 925 feet. And then we've got a couple other ones over here. That one's 798 feet. This one is 621 feet. And then if you look over here, there's a little peak right there. And that's 189 feet. This one, 242 feet. So now we've got some really neat landmarks to compare to. Let's go back to your shot. Now we don't know where this image is taken from your video because you didn't bother marking the site, but you claim that it's 560 feet in elevation. We'll go ahead and go with that. But here's our island. And let's go ahead and zoom in on that a little. So let's take a moment and look at the 560 foot elevation shot on the bottom and the Google Earth image on the top. See if we can identify these landmarks. So right here, we have that low peak. We don't really see it here, but we definitely see this one and that's it right there. Then we see this one right here, that one right here. Here's the main peak. Here's the first side peak the second side peak. Then we can barely see the shoulder of this island, 
and maybe a little bit of something in between it that would represent this area. So the Google Earth image and the image from 560 feet of elevation match up very nicely. Now let's have a look at the one that they put in the video from right down on the beach. Now once again, same Google Earth image. Here's the main peak, main peak. We've got a little peak right there. Got one right there. Got this second one right here, and that's that one right here. And then we've got this little peak right here, and that's this little shoulder right here. We don't see this bottom one. Now looking over the other way, here's the main peak, main peak. First side peak, first side peak right there. Second side peak, second side peak. We don't see any of this, nor do we see any of this island, which I might add is the one that he measured to. So here's the problem that we run into. If we took that photograph at three feet above the surf, we should see everything above three feet on that island, but we don't. Let's see how much we actually do see. Now, just for completeness, let's go ahead and have a look at this island in light of the advanced earth curve calculator. Now we'll double check our numbers. I put in 10 feet as an observation height. Now granted that tripod was only three feet high, but the beach where it was was at least four feet high. I actually gave it a little bit more. Target distance was roughly 31 miles and the elevation of the highest peak on that island is 925 feet. So with no refraction at all, 490 feet of that island should be hidden. Let's have a look and see how much is. And if we come over and have a look at the image, here's the main peak, there's the main peak, second peak, second peak, third peak, third peak. We can clearly see that peak. As a matter of fact, we can see even this lower one right here. We can't see any of this stuff out here though. So let's add some refraction in and see what difference that makes. We'll just put in standard refraction. 395 feet. Well, 395 feet will be somewhere between 461 feet and 320 feet, which is that peak right there. Let's have a look at our image. We can see that peak and we can see that peak, but it's not that high off the horizon. Now again, a little bit of extra refraction would account for that tiny little difference. And on a flat earth, of course, we would see more than this area right here of the island. We'd see all the way out here. We'd see this little saddle right here. And we'd see this entire island, none of which is visible from the beach. So our only conclusion is that we can't see this part of the island because it's behind the horizon. Now, if you want to try and show this to be a flat earth proof, do what I told you to do at the beginning. Put your camera right here, get it on a tripod with a decent telephoto lens on a nice day without much refraction and take a picture of that island right there. There it is. Show me 35 feet above the waterline on that island and you have an argument that the earth is flat. If you cannot see down to 35 feet above that waterline, you don't have an argument for a flat earth. Now go out and do it right. Well guys, your work is cut out for you. If you want to get above the refraction and the waves, you need to go to this spot right here. But quite frankly, you're not going to because the earth is a sphere. Now, here's a little bit of advice. If you're going to make videos on YouTube, bucking 2,500 years worth of science that shows the earth is a sphere, bring some game, because so far your efforts have been laughable. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for your support of the channel. 
And until the next time, take care.